Welcome back to Frontline News. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. It's now time for Frontline Business. As local businesses prepare for the implementation of the ban on single-use plastics and styrofoam, there are concerns of job cuts on the horizon. More from Kimberly Broderick. Speaking on the exchange at Financial Gleaner and JNN Business Forum, Director of Marketing and Product Development at Resinco, Francois Chalifour, said as local businesses prepare for the ban, some employees of plastic and styrofoam manufacturers may see a shift in employment. So there will be a, um, I mean, for instance, just at Wisinko alone, there's, there's 150 employees who are dedicated uh, working four shifts, seven days a week, 24 hours to manufacture approximately, we believe 65 to 70% of the market share. The rest is uh, likely imported. Um, so there'll be a definite shift um, in employment and in, um, consumer choices as to what, um, how their meals will be presented. Similarly, Director of Packaging at FlexPack, Alan Ross, says the ban will affect about 30% of the work being done by his company. We have about 30, between 30 and 40% of our work is actually plastic bags. Mm -hmm. The remainder is uh, laminated packaging really for the food industry. And then we do also bunting. We have about 20 staff immediately, they'll be affected, so we need to find solutions. We have about 200 clients. And a special projects manager at Grace Kennedy, Simon Roberts, says the ban will significantly affect the company's lucrative retail business. It, it has a direct impact on our retail business, Hilo, um, and it will also have impact in, in, in the ability of our consumers to easily access the products unless and as when um, alternative packaging formats, such as paper boxes and other biodegradable type packaging um, are become available in the country. Starting January 1, 2019, the government will impose a ban on the importation, manufacturing, distribution, and use of specific categories of plastic packaging materials. These include single-use plastic carrier shopping bags, styrofoam, and the plastic drinking straws. Kimberly Broderick, Frontline Business. Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett is to address the official opening and welcome reception for the 2018 Jamaica Product Exchange JPEX. JPEX 2018 runs from September 23 to 25, 2018 at the Montego Bay Convention Center. It is the premier trade event for the travel industry locally and is a collaborative initiative between the Jamaica Hotel and Tourism Association, JHTA, and the Jamaica Tourism Board, JTB. Staged annually, the three-day trade show provides the ideal forum for leading suppliers in Jamaica's tourism industry to negotiate, network, and meet with tour operators, travel wholesalers, and other tourism partners from across the globe. On the foreign exchange market, the U.S. dollar is being sold for an average $136.31. The Canadian is trading at $105.34. The pound sterling for $179.07, while the euro is being sold for $161.14. In Tuesday's trading session, the JSE combined index declined by 4,786 points to close at over 300,000. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 57 stocks, of which 28 advanced, 23 declined, and 6 traded firm. The junior market index advanced by 22 points to close at 3,436. Stocks advancing were 138 Student Living, AMG Packaging and Paper, Barita Investments, Blue Power Group, and CAC 2000. Stocks declined for 1834 Investments, Caribbean Cement, Caribbean Flavors and Fragrances, Caribbean Producers, and Carreras Limited. Stocks trading firm includes G West Corporation, ISP Finance Services, JMMB Group, Lasco Manufacturing, and Paramount Trading. Dermont Trading Company was the volume leader with over 1 million units, followed by NCB Financial Group with 967,108 units, and Lasco Financial Services with 625,607 units. 
and news in oil. Oil prices eased on Thursday, slowing an upward surge that had pushed the market towards four-year highs after U.S. President Donald Trump called on OPEC to, quote, get prices down now, end quote. Brent crude oil was down 50 cents at $78.90 a barrel. U.S. light crude was down 9 cents at $71.03 a barrel after rising nearly 2% on Wednesday. And that's it for Frontline Business. I'm Cody and Bright. Pleasant viewing.